G'day folks, and welcome back to the channel for episode number 6 of our Chaos Ray Warlock, where last episode we actually swapped over to the Chaos Ray. And with only 10 points at the time, uh, it was a little bit underwhelming, but with a few more points in the skill, it will get better. Now, if you've just swapped over and you did it at a slightly earlier level like I did, because your uh, Pulsing Shard didn't have a level requirement of 37 like does sometimes happen, what you can do is you can skip a few points in some other things, maybe take a few out of Maven Sphere and just put them in here to max it out. Or you can do what I'm going to do and just kind of deal with the slightly lower damage until you get the extra levels. It's not a big deal. Um, as far as devotions go, I think next we're doing the Tortoise. And uh, I have actually checked the plan, so I shouldn't say I think we are doing the Tortoise next. Um, this is a hardcore build, so I am putting some extra hardcore tankiness in it. I'm not going to do the standard um, extra damage build, which is Hungering Void here, because it eats your health at 140 a second. By the time we got to this, it wouldn't be an issue, but, you know, we'll do something else. So let's go ahead and pick up the rest of these quests and turn in the ones that I had available, and then we'll head out into the... Uh, what is it called? This next one. Sorrow's Bastion. I had Soleil's Bastion in my head for some reason. And we will talk to the Death's Vigil here. Now, last episode, I kind of just YOLO'd it and chose Death's Vigil because I prefer them. Um, if you're ever stuck in a choice between Death's Vigil and Kaiman's Chosen, most of the time you can just YOLO it. Um, there are some builds where you absolutely can't do that, though. Um, for example, the Lightning Caster Paladin, you need a helmet off of uh, Skybreaker... What is her name? I forget her name, but you need a specific helmet from an, a, uh, a boss who's only there if you go with... Um, I think it's with Kaimans. But you, you specifically have to choose one of them for that build. For this build, you don't need to choose one or the other. Although, uh, these guys do have the earliest plus one belt. Where is it? There it is. Uh, we'll have to get to respected with them to buy this recipe. Um, it does come with a proc, which is kind of like having a rare prefix kind of baked into it, but uh, it'll only craft with one affix on it. So it's a good belt, um, and I did kind of choose quote-unquote correctly, uh, mostly by accident. <laughs> so Probably best that I had checked that, but um, it all worked out in the end, fortunately. Uh, right, so we now have the quest to collect the insignias, we have the quest to clear out the mill, and we have the quest to gather Malkadar's remains. Now, we need to get our hands on about seven, I think, Chthonic Seals of Binding before we're kind of done here. However, if we run through this area and we don't find seven, which I'll be surprised by, uh, what we can do is after we finish Dark Veil Gate, there is a really nice little, um, I guess we'll call it a crypt, uh, but that is absolutely filled with people who are going to drop those for us, and also they have a higher chance to drop the Bloodsworn Scepter that we will be using for our main weapon. Alright, let's kill a few of these there's one seal. Now the first one I'm going to recommend you use on that Devotion Shrine that you can see on my map. Just because Devotion Points are, are really, really strong, although in this case it's going to be one point in Crossroads Yellow. But we do need to get that anyway. Um, did this get more powerful while I wasn't watching? Or am I just attacking things that are squishy? Definitely not complaining, but this feels a lot stronger than it did yesterday. Okay, so star on the map, that's another um, another dog tag. Getting beat up a little bit here. That's all right, we have lifesteal on the beam now. And honestly, the lifesteal is the main reason why you want this. Uh, it's not the only reason, obviously, but it's the main reason. Um, let's go ahead and turn this on, sure, why not? What could possibly go wrong? Oh yes, this could go wrong. <laughs> Alright, let's use the mirror. So, 
Mirror gives you complete immunity to damage, and it also uh, reflects a lot of damage. So I'm just going to kind of kite away a little bit and wait for the mirror. I am watching my health. I do have a potion available, so should be fine. These guys are kind of a problem, especially when they have um, life-stealing attack speed weapons, and he was using this to beat me down, so um, converting all of his damage to Aether as well probably hurt. Uh, right, do I want any of this stuff? Probably not. Let's have a look at it, though, and we can most likely just sell it. Yeah, I don't think I want any of that. That's fine. Also, we have level 35 coming up, which is the level at which you get access to the first set of um, faction equipment. So we'll have a look at my reputations. I know Homestead is fine because of the, uh, the beast kills in the Pine Barrens, so Homestead is respected easily. Rovers are very close, uh, 180. I may go and get this just so as I can buy the blueprints I want from them. Black Legion's never gonna happen this early. Order of Death's Vigil also never gonna happen this early. And Devil's Crossing's already respected, so we're good. Could be quite easy to get Rovers to respect it if you need to. You just go to Twin Falls and do the totem there once or twice, and that will get you there. All right. Let's rescue these farmers, and I see the uh, devotion shrine there. These are not the farmers, never mind. We have to find the farmers, though. I think they're just over here. Oh, there is Bolvar. I'm going to kill him. Um, don't think you get the quest for him with devils or with uh, Death Vigil, but uh, I'm going to kill him anyway. He's made out of loot. Okay, and I think, think you want to stay in melee with him. Possibly it doesn't matter, but I have it in my head that you want to be in melee with him, so I'm just going to stand there. I'm going to keep his friends under control somewhat. And before I started recording this episode, actually, I was looking at uh, a bunch of vendors. Um, I checked Isaiah Redden for his potions because I do want to get my hands on a couple of potions. I think I already have some of them. Uh, what do we got? Repeater, Repeater, and his amulet. So this is the plus one, Oathkeeper amulet, which we are obviously not going to use. Didn't get very good affixes on it either, so that's fine. Uh, right, so this shrine, you need a Chthonic Seal of Binding for this one, so let's go ahead and offer that. And we did get some Stonehide stuff. Now, Stonehide is just armor percentage, um, but armor percentage is quite good. And this one also has cast speed baked in. I would lose some health, though. I think I'll leave that one for now. We're going to re be replacing gloves and boots here in, what, 5% of a level, so it's not a big deal. These cultists with the glowy red sticks, uh, you do want to kill them. I've already got uh, this particular stick, which is okay. Void Touched of the Void is kind of... I mean, it's it's alright, but it's double magic affixes. I would love to get a Chaos Damage proc on this, and uh, the weapon at least does have a Chaos Bias, so it should be... I won't say easy, but certainly easier to get. I think that's my farmers just there. You can see the blue dots on the map, so we'll go rescue them. Um, how many more insignia do I need? Where are they? I've already got five. May have... That might have even been six. It was six, yep. Okay, so we'll send these guys back to Homestead. We'll pick up Malkadar's remains. Very convenient of all this to be in the same place. And then we just head north. Now, I've already done the totem in this area, so I'm not too worried about that. I've also already collected my insignia, so I'm not going to bother clicking on any more of those. Um, however, these cultists, like I said, they're made out of loot, so we can definitely kill them. And Kaiman's idiots also need to go. 
These guys are not really made out of loot. I just don't like them. Alright, we've made it to the Blood Grove here. Um, let me see if I can get 35. Yes, beautiful. So, that's 35. We've got a little bit of shopping to do. Now, I'm going to hit Homestead before I go to Devil's Crossing because of a couple of reasons. The first one is they have two generic merchants here in Homestead, and I want to check for some rare rings. Nothing there. Also want to check for a weapon. I don't expect I'm going to get any good weapons. Um, and I do want a Vitality and a Chaos Resistance Potion for when I'm fighting Thalnosh. I'm just going to check the weapons for a Chaos Damage proc. Kind of not expecting to get one. Yeah, not really. Okay, so Respected for Homestead. This is where I generally get my boots and braces, or boots and gloves from when I'm leveling. Now, the good thing about them is they are generic all damage. Um, the bad thing about them is they're kind of eh. But, let me just check these ones. Do I want them? I do like offensive ability. So we've already got a uh, 60% chance to crit, okay? Uh, more crit is usually a good thing. I think that might be a little over the top though. I don't think I want this. So the armor value is kind of same same, but the gloves I'm wearing have percent armor already. They're also the thing that's capping my bleeding, although these would be the thing that would be capping my piercing if I put them on. 24 spirit is, is nice though. The other option is these ones. These are the heavy armor version. And these are considerably better. They are, again, piercing instead of bleeding. We do have a few bleeding enemies coming up on the other side of Dark Veil. Um, I think I'll leave the gloves for now, though. Boots, on the other hand, these are the boots you want. Um, these have Aether, Chaos, and Elemental Resistances on them. My current boots do have physical resist, which I do like, um, but I'm going to swap them out for these. Um, the armor value on these is kind of same, same. Uh, these have run speed. The blue ones just have physical resist, which I really like. Um, and unfortunately, there goes my capped um, bleeding resist. Um, and I do want my components back from those items. So, uh, Homestead, gloves and boots at level 35. Also, Let's have a look here. Sanctified Bone is a good one to have. In fact, I'm going to buy that. And some of these others are good to have. Like, you will need Bloody Whetstones later. Uh, you will probably not need Leathery Hide or Spine Carapace. This one is a component in later things that you craft. Um, but you definitely want Sanctified Bone for crafting Sanctified Bones. Though, having said that, they are four seals of binding each. So... They are a little expensive. Alright, so, Homestead, done. There's nothing else here we really need. However, Devil's Crossing does have some nice stuff. So, Quartermaster here. Now, the helmet here... Which one is it? I think it's, uh... That's no, this one here. This one has the Elemental Seal on it, which at this point in time is actually a decent chunk of damage. The uh, Vitality Res on that is also kind of good, especially when I'm at 50%, though taking this helmet off would slightly uncap my Chaos. The reason I'm here, though, is this. I want the Devil's Chest Guard. Um, I have got a decent roll on the Fizz Res for this one. I think it goes up to 5 or 7%. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, and that also has Pierce Res, so that would be very nice. Looking at it, though, swapping over to this is going to nuke my resistances. So, just lost 36 pierce. Well, technically 17. Lost 24 poison and lost 14 chaos, which apparently doesn't matter. I do think it's the better option, though. The two resistances I'm worried about at the moment are chaos and vitality, and they are still capped, so I'm going to go with that. Also going to look at the shoulders, because again, you get physical resistance on them. Uh, and actually a pretty good roll here. 19% chaos would be an issue there. 
would cap no wouldn't cap our pierce but it would take it better uh it back um and i think i want to do that because of the um armor value uh in terms of what are these called blueprints aether soul we've already got that that's honestly the important one and a lot of the others don't really matter you will use rotten hearts later you may use focusing prisms um, these are going to be good for if you have really big issues with the energy cost of the um, the beam. Chuck one of these on your amulet and you're good to go. And you'll maybe use some of these other ones for, uh, for crafting other things, but I think we're mostly under control here. Okay, so resistances, what happened? And how much do I care? <laughs> Okay, I want my Mark of the Traveler back, so I can do the faster running thing. Uh, I do want my... Um, I do want my Silk Swatch back. I do want my other Silk Swatch back. I do want to swap these weapons over. And... This one was... This one really hurt. So... 36 pierce res, 24 poison res, 14 chaos res. Um, I mean, I know it's just the impervious prefix on this, but this is a really nice chest piece. Shame I had to break it. Right, uh, the other thing I want to do is I do want to keep the item here. I do want to use another soul shard here. Now, I did have an ectoplasm there, which is 20% increased energy amount, which is huge, and an extra 3 energy per second, which is also very nice. However, the soul shard gives me 20 vitality resistance, which I do need, and also allows me to absorb energy from spells, so if I am attacked with spells, I'll be fine. Got 3 extra points here, chuck them in the aether ray. I'm going to max this out first, then I'm going to max out Disintegration, then I'm going to complain about not having any mana. But, uh, it is what it is. Right, I think that will about do us for... for item exchange. Um, I'm going to check a few of these. Can't really do that. And this one... Okay, so if I swapped out the Curse Bearer for this one, which I probably should do, honestly, uh, what I get out of it is capped Poison Res. I get uh, capped Pierce as well out of out of making that swap. But those are not really resistances I care a huge amount about at the, same, at the moment. And I do lose that minus 10 Vitality Resistance proc. I think that's fine, but I'm going to hang on to these. Um, and I was keeping these blue braces for using now. The armor value is the same. I would lose health. Most of or all of that elemental stuff on the gloves is worthless because I don't hit things with my weapon. The casting speed is nice. And overload, I think, is one of these, right? Yeah. Overload is also something I do want to get. I think we'll leave that for now. While I'm here, uh, just do a quick check through the rare items. Just in case there's something nice. There usually isn't. But... So certain base items I just don't want to look at. Alright. We are done there. And we'll move on from the Blood Grove. Now, I could go and turn in a bunch of these quests as well. Um, I probably should, but I'm going to continue on this way and uh, kill some more cultists, basically. So we've got actually ethereals here. Um, my aether resistance is not great. However, it did just improve a decent amount, which is nice. Now, I'm not going to do my usual trick here and, and farm the totems. I'm just... You know, making my way through at this point. Uh, three heroes here. And they're all dead. Okay, what did we get? Uh, ascended Vestments. So plus three to Panetti's. 
and a conversion I don't want, no, and then the ascended diadem. So this does have some MI stuff uh, for Mirror of Ariokthes, so extra crit damage is nice. Plus three to reckless power, and we don't have that yet. Don't know if we're even going to get that. Um, it's not going to be the uh, the exclusive we use, but we might take it temporarily, perhaps, probably not. So we'll just pick them up, pick them up. I do need bits, but I'm not going to use any of that. Uh, we do need to go down here for the the mill. So I'll get that done. Void touch to the void. Pretty much same, same. Uh, less percentage on this one. So I'm going to leave that. You could dual wield these if you wanted to. You'd have to go back to Devil's Crossing and craft the uh, Bladesworn Talisman, I think it is. But there's a there's a relic there that will let you dual wield if you're not a Nightblade. You definitely could do that. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, you will get more damage on Sigil for later on. But uh, the Pulsing Shard is just better okay I want to kill you drop me a new stick no new stick all right so these Chthonian Harbingers are the bane of my existence basically when it comes to chaos monsters these are the ones I want to see the least um, it seems they are highly resistant to the damage types we're doing which is fine and also Vitality of Decay. Okay, when they die, they blow up. Um, I had been thinking that they shred resistances. That may have been a 1.1.9.8 uh, thing. They may not do that anymore. It does look like it's just Vitality. Or it could be um, only the higher level versions of them do it. Either way, these ones are not. No totem here, sadly. That's alright, we can check the other locations, they're both kind of on the way. I think once I get to the Darkvale Gate, I'm going to double back and do a bunch of quest turn-ins. Because I know that the um, Death's Vigil are going to want me to do a bunch of stuff for them. Definitely going to want me to go into that mine that's full of Aether Fire. Which, if you don't want to do, if you're playing hardcore, then just don't do it. Um, it's not the end of the world if you just stop doing the quests for them. There's another Void Touch to the Void. Seems the cultists in this uh, this area are a little bit under-equipped. They've only got generic magic items. No good res. All right, you've got a stick. You didn't want to give it to me. Okay, so we are running into energy issues. Um, this is the solution. Elixir of Spirit. You hear the words, not enough energy. Just push that. You'll be fine. I'll be fine. Everyone's going to be fine. Well, except for these guys. They're dead. Mystic of the Void. Okay, so Mystic's going to be your percent spirit there. Um, let me pick it up sell it. I have to remind myself that I still need iron bits all the time. Okay, can I get in that door? Looks like maybe. So going through this area, I am doing not, not a full full clear, uh, but I am trying to kill a lot of extra things more than I normally would. Uh, generally speaking, Let's just actually have a look at this. Am I getting energy back from these? A little bit. Uh, generally speaking, when I'm coming through here, I don't care about any of the MIs, so I don't usually uh, kill most of this stuff. I'll just run straight through. But because they do have the weapons that I want, uh, it is worth killing them. may have to start using energy potions on cooldown, actually. That's alright. If I need to, I can always go back to um, more ectoplasms. 
Um, let's eat that. I don't want to use ectoplasms because they're kind of rubbish aside from energy management. But if you're consistently running out of energy and don't have energy potions available, you may have to. Alright, get a few more of these. I'm clearing the area at this point because I do want to do this totem. So to do that, I want to clear the area out. I know these things, whatever they are, are going to be resistant to my damage. So I definitely want to get rid of them. Um, Stone Faced is good. The rest, not so much. Okay, I think the area is sufficiently clear after we get these guys. Here we go. Da, da, da. Use a potion. Let's just give this a second or two to come back. Should be fine. That'll do. Alright. Who did we get? We got Vampiric. We got Electrified. We got Frozen. I don't really want to get hit by freezing attacks. And the plan is basically I'm just going to kite them back and forth. When you do have the uh, the mirror available, you can stand in people's face and just use it, and you'll be fine. Um, let's not get hit by this guy if we can avoid it. There we go. All right. What did he win? Fiendbinder's Hood. No. Beast Slayer's Mark. No. And Slith Scale Leg Wraps. Also, no. So I don't think I actually won anything I want. <laughs> uh, Mighty of Butchery here. Okay, so this is one that I kind of want, just for the um, the MI bonuses to Sigil of Consumption. You also get plus three levels of destruction on this one. So Rylock Mark is something I want. Uh, do I want this one, though? I think I'll take it anyway, and we'll just keep it for now. And the rest of the stuff I don't think I care about. Uh, barbaric's decent. Anyway, no, 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 no. We don't want any of this stuff. Pick up my shield floating in the air. Okay, I've already got the treasure trove, but I'm gonna check. Well, not check, but I'm gonna go here and kill these two. And we'll use that. Okay, I see a lot of glowing red sticks, and not one of them dropped. I am disappointed. So coming up on Zarya, um, I haven't checked Zarya's resistance profile, but I would not be surprised if she is uh, at least resistant to this beam. And I also wouldn't be surprised if I forget about this and just kill her and go on through. Okay, so Zarya, when you are fighting Zarya, if you can have 100% chaos, you want 100% chaos. Um, it's probably even worth swapping items out to get it, if you can. Um, I don't think I have any chaos resistance gear that I could swap in. It's not the end of the world if you don't do it, which it looks like I'm not going to. Uh, but you do want Chaos Resist, you do want Vitality Resist if you can get it. Uh, do I have? I do have. So, Vitality and Chaos is the damage type she's going to do. And when you see her crystals, you can either kill the crystals or run, or they're going to nuke you very hard. With that said, let's go say hi to her. Now, damage against her is actually okay. I wouldn't say it's amazing, for sure. I'm just going to take one of those crystals. I'm pretty sure it'll be fine. Yeah. May as well get rid of it. And we'll just work her down. So, Bloodsworn Curse. Yep. About 15 uh, resistance shredding. And I'm going to kill the crystals. So the crystals will zap you. If you eat both of them in the face with no resistances, you're going to have a bad time. So she's got the plus one to shaman skills, um, amulet. 
She also, I believe, can drop the uh, the weapon we want. None of these are particularly good. Not a single rare affix between all of the ones I got. Which kind of sucks. Okay. Devotion Shrine, I did remember. Unfortunately, we got the tanky boys. We'll see if we can get them all in the same beam. That would be ideal. Nope. They're too fat. <laughs> Model's too large. They don't want to stand in line. That's fine. We'll get them this way. Okay, there's our devotion point and um, fanatics overcoat. Okay. So that proc is interesting. The armor loss, the physical resistance loss, I don't love those. Total speed is really nice, and then you get attack and casting speed on the proc, as well as some offensive ability. Health regen and health. That's that's actually not horrible. Anyhow. Uh, let's go ahead and get these two points in the tortoise. And we will be moving... Um, actually... Alright, I'm going to move some points around. I've just worked out that I didn't need that one in the um, in the yellow. I think that's from when I was getting the lotus from memory. So we're going to go take that back. You do want to be as greedy as you can with your devotion points. I've been a little bit lazy on that front. Um, and I definitely shouldn't be. I'm going to sell this. Uh, this is a decent blue to use though, for sure. While we're here, just check for rare rings. I do enjoy a good rare ring. Um, something like uh, Harmonious of, of whatever is good to have, just for resistances. Didn't get one this time, unfortunately. Okay, Devotion Points, give me that one back. Um, I think that's all we're going to get for the moment, but um, what's that worth to me? 100 health and some defensive ability. Also lets us unlock either of these a little bit earlier. Uh, I will probably go with the foot first. I, I definitely shouldn't. I should. Should get the tortoise shell first. Get the proc unlocked as soon as you can. Get it leveling up as soon as you can. Um, but I just, I love me some physical resistance. Okay, let's go turn in some quests. What do we got? We got homestead. We got homestead. More homestead. Okay, three quests to turn in in homestead. Then we'll go talk to the Death Vigil. I think they're going to send us into the mines. So first up, Captain Soma. Okay, yep, we will go and kill Thalnosh. No problems. Um, here is your dog tags. Lovely, lovely. And please give me a level. Beautiful. Alright, we got level 36. I'm going to continue putting points for physique. Probably around 50, I'll chuck 10 points in spirit. Um, honestly, it doesn't really matter. Okay, a little bit more damage. Uh, this is now hard capped. So if you had to go to 37 to do your swap, you will have this hard capped. You'll have a few more points in disintegration. But um, yeah, we're good. We're good. All right, what else did we have? We had Sora's Bastion. Let's go talk to the Death's Vigil. Uh, do I have, actually? I don't. Okay, I need one more Seal of Binding. So I'm just going to reset this. I am at the Dark Veil Gate. No, I'm not. I didn't get it, did I? <laughs> I did get it. I did get it. Okay, I'm not as dumb as I thought I was. Good, good. We're going to go for another run from Bloodgrove up to Darkfell Gate. I need three... I need three, um... Chthonic Seals of Binding. And this run is probably the best option we have at the moment. You could also just go through Darkfell Gate. So glad that worked out. <laughs> this dreadful feeling that I didn't grab the, um... the waypoint. So anything with a yellow name has a pretty good chance of dropping them for you. Um, but generally, just kill a bunch of cultists and, and you'll get it. I 
think the is it colas or harbingers i forget the exact name the um the ones that cast at you i think have better chances to drop don't quote me on that i've never checked okay none of you guys have yellow names so it's fine we'll kill a few anyway Here we go. This looks juicy. There's my seal of binding. Okay, now we go to Sorrow's Bastion. The reason I do that is I know that the next quest is they're going to ask me for three of them. So running in here, turning a quest in, and then sending me out to get another one anyway. Just save a little bit of time doing it that way. I could go for another run through Darkvale Gate. Um, getting a Sanctified Bone on my helmet would definitely be a good thing. Okay, now they're sending me to the source, uh, the um, ethereal essence. This is the mine. So let's go do the mine. Um, and it may be actually, might actually be four that I need for the, um, the bone on the helmet. But the bone on the helmet is going to give chaos and vitality resist and i forget if it's more damage against chthonics or, or less damage taken from them uh, but either way it's good to have okay heading into the mine here uh there's going to be a lot of ethereal damage on the floor your aether resistances actually don't matter for this um this does percent health damage so you can't kind of resist it you just have to um, not stand in it, basically. There are a few ways you can block it. I think damage absorption is one of them, so um, Maven Sphere, I think, helps. However, the best thing to do is to just not stand on it. So once you've been through the mines a few times, it's relatively safe because you'll know kind of where you can stand, where you can't stand. Also, the actual green floor is not what's hurting you, it's the lightning. So if there's green stuff on the floor, you can stand in some of it, as long as there's no lightning. They do have um, little houses and things on the way, so you can just, you know, jump into the little houses and you'll be fine. The other way you can do it is you can go down that way as well. And then you don't have to worry about this little section. Like I said, though, if you don't want to come into these mines, just just stop. Just don't do this quest. Don't accept it. Don't come in here. It's no problem. I, however, really enjoy the old Aether Shards. Um, and I've, like I said, I've done this so many times, I know where the kind of safe places are. Though, now that I've said that, I need to be very careful not to uh, get myself killed. <laughs> it's definitely possible. All right, everybody's dead, lovely. I'm running out of energy, so that's always fun. I will start putting some points into um, spirit. Drinking potions like they're going out of style. Going out of date, maybe. All right, this bottom section can be a little dangerous. You've got Venarius over here, hits decently hard. You've got Noveria Stormfire here. The goal is basically to not fight both of them at the same time. So that's what I'm going to try and do. It's not particularly difficult to just pull her on her own. If she could cast some more spells at me, that'd be great. Pretty sure I'm going to run out of energy before my uh, energy potion's up and she's going to be alive still. Yep, okay. That's fine, we'll just tank it. I haven't noticed the health bar being particularly stressed. Um, have been leeching with the energy beam. There we go. Alright, we're good. So she's got her uh, mirror up. Okay, Fanatic's overcoat. Alright, 
somebody wants me to wear that. <laughs> I don't know who it is, but somebody wants me to put that on. Uh, we've got some really nice resistances on this one. I think I'm going to wear that. Uh, that, that may have been a really bad idea. So, chaos resistance, I definitely need, so... As much as I'm looking at those four really good resistances... Yeah, I'm gonna keep this, and once I get through Dark Veil Gate, I'll probably put this on. This is also decent, just for the offensive ability. Um, decent resistances. Again, though, I need the, um... I need the Chaos Res. That's fine. I'm not going to wear that blue. Uh, more out of spite than any anything at this point. I am going to avoid Venarius. Um, I don't need to kill him. I'm just here for the dynamite and uh, we'll get out now. So, back to Sora's Bastion here. I'm going to turn this in. Uh, I think the next quest is to go get the ashes from uh, just before Fort Icon, the Tomb of the Archon. So, we'll do that when we get to it. Uh, what do we got? I think we've got time to kill um, Thalnosh, or maybe die to him. We'll see what happens. Okay, next quest uh, is going to be up here. We'll talk to the Keeper. Okay, yes, it is the Gather the Ashes quest. So if you can, if you think you can do okay in the mine, I do recommend doing it. Um, it does get you access to a couple extra quests, which is more XP. So definitely good to do it, but if you're worried about the Aether Floor, uh, just skip it, it's fine. Missed the turn off, so we'll have to do a U-turn, go back. Now, I really, really want some more Chthonic Seals. Um, ideally, I want four of them so I can make a, uh, a bone. You didn't die. Why didn't you die? Yeah, I definitely want that Sanctified Bone. Uh, maybe even two. I think I probably won't need two. I'm certainly not going to farm enough to make two. We will get a few seals in um, in the Darkvale Gate. Uh, what have we got? We don't have any at the moment. So that's not great. So if I don't get four before I fight, um, I, I want to say Kaizog, it's not, it's, it's Thalnosh and uh, Karoz. But if I don't have four before I fight him, I will just fight him and, and not worry about it. So we're back to Ethereals after this particular castle. Um, so maybe even worth making a, a runestone for the helmet. Alright, he's dead. Now, in this little section here, there is a free dynamite. Every time you come through here, there'll be one guaranteed dynamite. Um, don't think I care. We've got the direct route here to the exit, so we'll just take that. Uh, but you can head north, kind of up here. It's free dynamite, more stuff to kill. Don't any of you guys... Halfway through complaining about the lack of them, they start dropping. Lovely. Maybe I should complain more about it. <laughs> and I'll just poke my head in here. I never expect to get anything good from these hidden uh, treasure troves. And I haven't, but... Um, One-handed axe with a vitality life-stealing proc is actually... Not bad now that I'm looking at it. I'm not going to use it, um, but this is... This is definitely usable. Would lose some chaos damage, um, but that that proc is actually quite good, especially for this point in the game. 
getting lifesteal procs is, is pretty good. We are doing kind of half, well, more like three quarters chaos and uh, and one quarter vitality, but we are doing vitality damage as well, so it is kind of thematic. Okay, I don't think I need to kill any of you. Let's move on. So the things I'm worried about going into fighting Thalnosh is chaos and vitality resistance. I'm going to go and get a potion to fix these. Um, I think I have at least one of them in my stash already. I'm kind of expecting that this will be okay, but also better to be over prepared than dead. Um, there is one more little stash up here behind the wardrobe. Incorruptible. Okay, I could wear that. I'm not going to, but I could. Wait, is that a belt? That was a charm. Oh, it's an amulet. Yeah, no chance. I was thinking it was a metal. Um, so yeah, I'm not using that one. Now, I haven't done the totem in here, so yeah, there it is. Um, I was going to say I'm expecting it to pop up any second. Let's just head over there. I am going to do this totem. Um, also going to kill these cultists. Get a few extras from up here. I am going to take the time to kill them because there is a chance I can get enough seals of binding to get that bone. I do want it. Definitely need to get some more energy regen. So it might be time to start putting some points into spirit. Okay, I think I've got pretty much everybody is dead. Got a nice long run back to that totem, so energy can regenerate. Just take our time getting there. Um, definitely want to kill you and your friends. Okay, level 37. So this is the level which I was expecting to be doing the transition over to the Chaos Ray. Obviously already done it. I'm going to start putting points in spirit. Um, I could put one more in here. I think I will. Just get that extra percentage of spirit. And now we start putting points in disintegration. So I know this says that it is lightning and electrocute damage. Uh, it's actually vitality and vitality decay damage. So like I said, we do a decent amount of vitality uh, it's, what is that? Not even a quarter. It's it's about 20%. But it is there. Okay, uh, energy is kind of full. I think we're okay to do this. Okay, I got my button on the mirror here. Um, I do want to take out this guy first. The fact that he has a weapon kind of scares me a little bit. Let's turn the loot off so I can see what's going on. back up a bit. So the guy I said I wanted to kill first is probably going to be the last one to die. Let's see what weapon he's been beating me with. So he had a Child of Ruin. Not too bad. Uh, Touch of Malice. Everybody's dead now, right? Okay, good. Okay, Rune Singed, Handguards, no. Soul Splitter, no. Um, and none of these MIs are anything I care about. I'll have a look at that Touch of Malice, but I don't think I want to use that either. And, um, Shattered... No, de definitely not. I did see a, a Shattered Reality item here too. I can find it. Was it you? Yeah, so Shattered Reality is the uh, Aether and Chaos kind of combination. Plus two to Fabric of Reality, which is this one. This one is really good to get. I probably should have put a few points in here as well, but I'm just trying to get the uh, the main damage up. Alright, let's see. How many seals do I have? Two. Two. So I think I need two more. I don't think I'm going to get that before the 
um, Carol's fight, so I think we're going to skip it. I'll definitely be able to get them quite easily on the other side. But it should be fine. I'm pretty sure, like I said, I've got uh, Vitality and Chaos Resistance potions back in the stash, so I'll just use those. There is still a chance. It's a very small chance, but it is there. Okay, one of them's gone. There it is. Okay. That's the debuff I think I was looking for. I could be wrong. I could just made that up. Come on, no one got any more seals for me. Nobody at all. Doesn't look like it, does it? Okay. So we'll head back to Homestead. And I'll just double check which potions I have. Honestly, these resistances are... They're not capped, but it's probably fine. I'm just over-preparing. And this is my OCD kicking in. <laughs> right. I'm going to check my good friend Isaiah Redden here. I'm hoping he has a Chaos Resistance potion for me. Not the end of the world if he doesn't, but oh look, he does. Okay. Um, and while we're here. No, nothing good. Okay. This has fixed all my problems. Um, let's go kill him. So, capped vitality, capped chaos. This should be quite easy, but, you know... Every time you don't drink the potions and die, you're going to hate yourself for it. Right, so first form, relatively easy. The biggest issue here I think I'm going to have is... Um, my energy bar is going down faster than his health bar. So actually... Yep, I'll be right with you, mate. I'm going to do something I said I wouldn't do. I think I said I wouldn't do it. I wasn't planning on doing this. But I need the energy, and I don't think anyone wants to watch me running around in circles waiting for my energy potion to come back, so let's just do this. We will get a decent amount of energy leached from him. But, um, the extra damage isn't going to hurt either. Okay. What I'm going to do is I am going to do a limited amount of running around in circles. So I've got him almost dead. And uh, I want my energy back before I kill him. And I also want to kill him up in this corner if I can. I think that's probably the closest I'm going to get him. Alright. Kill his friends off first. And this one I think is going to take a little while. So I'm actually going to have to do mechanics, which means I'm going to be running away from tentacles. Okay, I'm running from that. I may also be running away from crystals. No, nope, I'm killing crystals. I'm getting out of that. So his tentacles in the floor have gone away, which is nice. Alright. I think I got him. Yeah, there he goes. Okay. Nothing on the floor. Good, good. Down he goes. Alright, what do we get? Bloodsworn Signet. So this is pets. Uh, it does also have plus three to Iskandra's Elemental Exchange, which could be useful. Um, I'm not going to wear it though, and the Goliath Signet is not for us. So no loot from him, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I did say I wasn't going to use this. Honestly, I probably didn't need this, uh, but the extra energy regen definitely sped it up a bit. Okay, Carosa's chest, we'll grab this. 
Spirit Cannon. Uh, yeah, no. Revolver Shattered Reality. Okay. Okay. No good Chaos Loot for me. I see how it is. It's fine. Um, and with that, I'm going to run down here and get the Rift. That skill's not ready. Because, like I always say, you don't want to be running through an empty castle just to get your Rift back. And uh, this will be the end of this episode. So thank you all very much for watching. See you in the next one. And goodbye for now.